Hi there, um, this video is about biodiversity and our goal is to explain why, um, what biodiversity is and why it's so important to the biases. So we're going to be able to define what biodiversity is and then explain explain why it's important to the biases by the end of the video. Okay, so what are the biophysical act, actions acting in this picture? Well, this is a bit of a revision starter. So we've got a picture of Uluru, where's rock? And um, when I ask you what can you see, um, I just want you to quickly pause the video and write down the biophysical interactions that you can see. Okay, let's see if you got some of the answers correct. So obviously, um, the is a rock, so um, that would be the uh, lithosphere. We've got obviously uh, grass there in the foreground, so that would be biosphere. We've got clouds in the sky, which would be hydrosphere, and then making sure that the clouds got up there would have been the atmosphere. So um, when we look at landscapes, landforms in geography, and we look at the physical geography of anything, we, we need to think about the biophysical interactions that are happening in front of us. So that was just a quick revision uh, question. Um, going back to the topic of this lesson, biodiversity, there's a lot of biodiversity even in this picture. Um, some people say this is a semi-arid desert region, there's not much biodiversity, but we have to look very, very close. That grass that you see there, there's several different species of grass, we can see some trees. Within that grass, there'll be a lot of animals that make um, use of that grass and make their homes there. So this is what we mean. So many, many um, ecologists believe that we may be on the verge of an episode of major species extinction. Um, you might be asking, why is that so important? Um, when was the last major species um, extinction? Well, it was about 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs um, roamed the earth. Um, suffered a big loss. So the reason for this belief is that there are huge areas of land that have been subjected to the land clearing for human use. So when we're talking about biodiversity, we're talking about the number of species of animals in within the community, within the, an ecosystem. So biodiversity is the number of species um, of plants and animals in an ecosystem. So um, a lot of ecologists believe because of humans, we are going to be facing the next major series um, a series event of uh, mass. So, um, biodiversity is the variety of life encompasses the different plants, animals, and microorganisms, their genes and ecosystems which they form part of. Biodiversity um, can be defined in three types, um, sorry, three levels. Genetic diversity, this is the inherited variation that occurs within populations or species as a result of different genes of biochemical combinations. So if a, an animal is going to be um, um, to withstand changes and we, we're going to go a little bit further ahead and talk about vulnerability and resilience. So resilience means being able to handle change. Vulnerability um, talks about whether it can cope or not with um, these changes. And um, for, for an animal to survive this, um, yeah, the, the animal species needs some strong di um, genetic diversity and that's the number of different um, species of one particular animal. So um, if we look at dogs, there's lots of different breeds. So not species, but breeds. The dog is a species, we have different breeds. And that's why humans um, have, li have lived so long and, and become so powerful because that the different breeds like Homo sapiens have really dominated so a um, ecosystem um, needs to have strong species um, with strong genetic diversity um, they also need species diversity so the number of species of different types of animal so um, if we were looking um, at insects there are lots of different species of insects and that makes certain ecosystems very very strong and then we have ecosystem diversity. This is the variety of habitats, communities, and ecological processes in the atmosphere that play a vital role in protecting catchments. So, if we um, say look at the central coast, we've got a variety of different ecosystems. We've got the beach, which would be one ecosystem. Behind it, we have lagoons, we have wetlands, um, and then as we go up to like places like Yarradon, we have a completely forest um, 
ecosystem. So we're very lucky on the central coast to have um, good genetic diversity, good species diversity, and good ecosystem diversity. That's why central coast, when we look at vegetation, the biosphere is pretty strong. Okay, threats to this biodiversity. So since around 1600, uh, the cause of extinction of species has been caused by um, three major um, reasons. First, species introduction. Second, habitat introduction. And then um, deliberate extermination. Um, so that should read habitat destruction, as you can see from the pie chart. Um, some people uh, might be surprised about that. The way we introduce species that has caused more harm than us knocking down vegetation and um, destroying habitats is pretty pretty huge, as well as hunting. So um, in Australia, we've been guilty of many species introductions which have had detrimental impact on local fauna and flora. Cane toad, rabbits, foxes, cats, all these type of things have had massive, massive impacts on our local um, diversity. So how do we protect um, biodiversity? So there's, there's two approaches. First, we limit human activity. Um, however, for this to be successful, the following must be taken in consideration. Um, should um, the, the, When we protect areas, it should be large enough to effectively protect biodiversity. It needs to be well managed, have boundaries that reflect environmental rather than political needs. A good example of that, you know, if we um, look at the Central Coast um, government, we've got the New South Wales government as well as the Australian Federal Government. Um, the way they manage ecosystems is all very differently, even though we're in the same country. So when we look at boundaries of protection, we have to take in the ecosystem rather than humans, political boundaries. Um, we need to take into account of local people. That's really important. And it needs to be surrounded by a buffer zone. Um, so there are considerations we need to take into account when we look at environmental management. And then when we look at individual species and population, protecting individual species only protects a small amount of flora and fauna. We need to be protecting whole ecosystems. Um, and that's a really big point if we look at um, how species introductions have caused such mass um, chaos and ecosystems is because um, if you look at the cane toad it, it was there to eat um, cane beetles um, however it didn't like cane beetles so what happened it started um, reproducing at a rate far higher than the native species and was out of competition that, so that had a massive massive impact whereas if we looked at the ecosystem before cane toads we would have seen um, natural reasons why there were more um, bugs in the uh, cane crops, um, in the sugar crops. And that would have been a much better form of management than introducing one particular species to compact one particular um, species of beetle. Okay, um, that's the end of the uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, big topic on biodiversity, lots of complicated words. Make sure you make heaps of notes in your Cornell notes. And if you don't understand anything I've said, Make sure you write a question in your Cornell notes and bring it to the lesson next. Okay, thanks.